Howdy folks, Tex Grabner here with Tex Grabner Outdoors. If you guys are ready for your Tex Grabner Outdoors Saturday morning cartoon awesomeness, I know one thing, I'm ready for bow fishing weather. However, it's early March as I'm filming this right now, so I hate Midwestern weather. Well, this is going to be kind of a collection video slash review video as far as my Lynn Thompson blade collection with a few extras thrown in there as well. I don't know if you can even still get these when you're watching the video. It's basically an accumulation of purchases from my misspent youth that in most cases is money that I'm glad that I spent. Now I get accused of being a Cold Steel fanboy quite a bit and it's true. It's really true because any time that I tend to buy something that wasn't a Cold Steel brand over say the last 15 years. I always end up getting screwed on the deal. But by the time that you use products long enough to actually be able to review them and have credibility on them, the downside is a lot of the times they're either off the market or they're back ordered. Or in Cold Steel's case, I have no idea what the current quality control is. I do, however, have a great trust for knives that were made during the Lynn Thompson era of Cold Steel. So this is going to be kind of a collection with some other miscellaneous blades thrown in there just for fun. Now if you guys are looking for a discount on all your Trad Life supplies on orders over $100 and to be able to show your support for Tex Grabbing Your Outdoors, use the code at 3 especially because bow fishing season's coming up. If you guys are looking for a discount on the Ethics Archery System for armoring the front of your arrows, use the code TGO10 at ethicsarchery.com. That'll give you a 10% off discount on your purchase price. If you're in the market for some high-end hunting ammunition between 30-06 all the way up to 505 Gibbs, check out my friends over at Aria Ballistic Engineering, especially if you want to take a 12 gauge and make it be able to kill a rhino. Cocksucker. I'm not really going to post links where you can find any of this stuff because a lot of it's cold steel and the quality may have changed now that it's changed hands and prices and availability may vary. Now I do have a couple of knives here that aren't cold steel and they're basically mole ninja knives and I love the way that Damascus looks but at the same time this was a bootleg Bagwell Hell's Bell that I got. Ironically enough, I bought it on Etsy from a seller in Ukraine. But you can see how thin it is. It is Damascus, but by the waves in the blade, you can see that it doesn't have the greatest heat treatment on it. Now, I was able to get a fairly decent edge on it. I was very disappointed in this purchase. As you can see, when I actually cut, it's a glorified shiv. It's not nearly as good as a true Bagwell Hell's Bell. Now this is an example of a good Damascus blade that I have. Damascus boot knife. And it actually has a nice pattern to it and a legitimate heat treatment rat tail tang so I feel like I did very well in this blade but just to err on the safe side I always prefer my cold steel fixed blades so as much as I love how cool Damascus blades look this Hell's Bell was very disappointing but this Damascus boot knife or dirk however you want to call it ended up not only being pretty but actually came to a razor edge when I actually sharpened it so for a mole ninja knife I'm actually kind of impressed with it but now down to my cold steel buoy knife collection now I do have some other buoys that aren't cold steel but it's also questionable as to if you actually count the cold steel leather neck as a cold steel buoy knife. 
The Leatherneck is pretty much Cold Steel's version of a K-Bar. And because I'm a fanboy, I bought it years ago. Now, I believe that this one is SK-5, but it could be OS-8. But just like anything Cold Steel from previously to when Lynn Thompson sold the company, you can basically rely on a Cold Steel blade. Now, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I will say for the price that I paid for it, I definitely got my money's worth and it has held up over the years, but I don't really use it all that often. Now we have the Cold Steel Recon Scout, the little brother of the Trailmaster. This is one of the old school Carbon 5s. It's basically what you got for a shorter Cold Steel fixed blade back in the day before they came out with the Leatherneck. And honestly, like I say, the Leatherneck is pretty much Cold Steel's version of the K-Bar knife. This here is the Cold Steel OSS. They also have an OSI. This one is OS 8A. And it's what I would term a boot knife. It's Cold Steel's version of the Black Bear. It's a sub-hilt fighting knife. And I've had this one for a lot of years. Takes an edge readily. It throws decently. And it does hold an edge, even though it is a boot knife. So not really a working blade. Now the OSI is a single edge version. And the OSS, even though it's not a hugely functional knife other than being a boot knife, if you're wearing engineer boots or harness boots, it does actually hold an edge and it is one of my favorites out of the catalog. Its older brother, or bigger brother, not older brother, is the Cold Steel Marauder. Sub-hilt fighter knife, buoy knife, clip point. Now this one looks a little bit mangled because in my younger days, while I was learning how to sharpen, it has angle grinder scars in the blade. Os 8 blade. Very sharp. Couldn't end like that. It would have been anticlimactic. It's a very sharp blade. Pretty light, but has a little bit of heft to it. And I absolutely do not regret buying it at all. I mean, granted... I rarely regret buying cold steel blades, to be completely honest with you. And so if you can get a hold of one of these, I would suggest picking it up. Now, OS 8 is not a super steel. It just isn't. Doesn't do super good in folding knives. Does very well, in my opinion, in the fixed blades. The, in my opinion, gold standard for a wilderness buoy knife slash fighting knife, the Cold Steel Trailmaster. This is one of the Carbon V, Carbon 5. Had this for a number of years. Wish that I had just bought a bucket full of them. Anybody that knows knives never has anything bad to say about Cold Steel Trailmasters because they are just amazing. Even some of the newer ones are still pretty good. Now granted, I would love to get a hold of 
some of the older American-made trail masters with the stag handles on them. Found out from Cutlery Lover, and then I had to watch the movie to verify, the stag handled trail masters are what the Devil's Rejects are using in the Rob Zombie movie. So this here is my Natchez buoy, but it does not look like how an original Natchez buoy would look because I initially thought, oh man, it would be really cool if I could take an antler and put an antler handle on a Natchez buoy so that it looks like the old school trail master buoys. The problem was I had to basically cut the handle off because the cable tangs that are in these for their rat tails, you really can't take them apart. And then I tried gluing everything back together and it was just a nightmare and I was super ashamed of a knife that I basically spent a lot of money on and then messed up. So then eventually I heated everything up with a torch so that the epoxy would let go, reground my blade to a flat grind. I mean this thing is scary right now. And took the guard, put it back on, welded a rat tail from a file, cut threads on it, put a brass cap on it that I could screw down, made sure that everything fit together good, and then filled everything in with epoxy, turned everything down tight. And so I love this Natchez buoy but I'm very ashamed of how I basically broke it in order to remake it and then frantically over years of figuring out how to do what I didn't know how to do, actually trying to restore it to factory condition. I had to make this handle out of a piece of walnut, but the Natchez buoy, while it is not necessarily a wilderness knife because it does have a rat tail tang. It is basically the pinnacle of a fighting knife. And this would take your hand off at the wrist. Like you do not want to mess with this knife. You need to be very careful with a knife like this that is this sharp. But that is as it stands right now my opinion of the cold steel Bowie knife lines, at least from the time that Lynn Thompson was at the helm of the company. But we have the Leatherneck, Recon Scout, OSS, Marauder, Trailmaster, and Natchez. So I showed you at the beginning of the video some miscellaneous knives from my Damascus blades, and I've got one Damascus blade here. And these knives don't necessarily fit in with the topic of the video, but I'm feeling creative and honestly it's 33 and sunny as opposed to 11 degrees and overcast like it was yesterday. But I like how the first part of the video turned out, so I'm not going to bother dragging everything out and redoing it. But this here is a Fox and Hound Damascus stag handled cookery from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Completely a Mole Ninja style. I've actually taken the top quillion and ground it off for a more traditional look. I've radiused off the stag handles. It is at least full tang and it is fairly decent Damascus, but it looks way cooler than what it actually is. But I do insist on being fastidious even in my Mall Ninja knives. And like I say, it looks cooler than it actually is. This on the other hand is a cold steel Gurkha cookery. And over the years I've kind of fallen out of love with the cookery style. I prefer buoys anymore. But it is a really nice knife, and I'm glad that I got it. It is stupid sharp, even if cookeries tend to be a little bit difficult to sharpen sometimes.
Cutting paper can either make you look like a hero or a dumbass, especially when the wind's blowing. Now, I've beaten the hell out of this cookery a lot. It's a lot slimmed down from its original blade width here because as I've hit fence wires with it and put nicks in the blade, I've basically had to completely re-edge it after grinding it off. I don't regret buying it, but I do generally prefer Bowie knives. Now, we'll see if I can get this one to cut. Not great, but I did make this knife when I was, I think, 14. It's a file knife. I used a bench grinder to put in this relief notch here. I ground the clip point with a bench grinder. I made the handle out of a piece of walnut, cut threads, flat iron guard that I drilled out. And the edge work though, the edge work I did with an old water whetstone wheel that was powered by a sewing machine treadle. And so this is the first knife that I made that was actually worth a damn. Now this knife I made about the same age as this knife. This is made out of a rolling coulter blade from a moldboard plow. I had my dad use the torch and cut my billet out of it, cut a rat tail on it, flat iron guard, and walnut handle, as you can see, I was much younger and much smaller when I actually made the handle on this knife. Ground in on the bench grinder, the clip point, and shaped the lower edge a little bit. And then this one I made with the same water whetstone treadle from the sewing machine. And both of these are pretty brittle. I would imagine because they are super hard because I never actually annealed them. But I would like to make something along the lines of this out of a horse rasp, but we'll see how that goes. Well, the lighting sucks, but this ought to look pretty cool. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this week's episode of Tex Grab Near Outdoors. As always, God bless all my sports in America. Join the NRA to protect our rides. Please check out my friends over at ThreeRiversArchery.com. Thank you very much to those of you involved in law enforcement, you good cops out there, and those of you serving in the military ready to die for freedom anywhere. And thanks for watching Tex Grab Near Outdoors.